Um, all right, so next up, uh, Juan Carlos from Viva Aerobus and Juan Pablo from Travel X are going to talk to us about reimagining the airline industry. Uh, so, do you need this? Or? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, yes, yes. very good. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I am so glad to be sharing the stage with Juan Carlos. Juan Carlos is probably one of the best and most innovative leaders of our industry. So I'm going to I'm gonna talk a bit about TravelX and our core product that, that is RMX. So basically, what we're doing at TravelX is what we call post-booking revenue management. We do believe that there is a huge space within this industry. I mean, we are on a one, almost one trillion revenue industry. And basically, we believe that this new this space between uh, since the customer book at, uh, a flight and, and he actually flies, there's a huge space where we believe that there, there is an opportunity of between 100 and 200 billion dollars. So our core product is called RMX. Basically, what we're doing is we're enabling airlines to use swaps and paybacks uh, to release seats to be sold to last minute high gill passengers. So basically we connect to the airlines, they, all the airlines data and you know, we do our magic and deliver up to 4% revenue increase on every, every fully booked flight. Basically, what we do is we identify all the flights where, we, where there may be a revenue opportunity. We deliver, we, we define offers to get these seats back, these payback or swap offers. We deliver this offer to the customers, and the customer then can, uh, can choose which is the best option for them, and we issue the credit and we release these seats that are sold to high yield passengers. So I'm gonna show you as, should be, yeah, there's a small video that's played better than me. Great. So basically, you know, what we're doing is we're delivering more revenue with no added cost or complexity that goes straight to the airline bottom line. And so today we're here with Juan Carlos. We want to talk a bit about, you know, our partnership. Basically, you know, since we launched, we have, we were surprised about the customer adoption, you know, in terms of uh, transactions, you know, we, we got up to six transactions per flight, delivering an incremental revenue of $136 per transaction. That means, you know, an incremental ransom of 4% on every single managed fully booked flight. I mean, in terms, I mean, this is just, this was just the beginning. We were able to increase our performance like 20% uh, every month. And we still, and we are, you know, we're building and we will be launching new functionalities and features in the coming months as we believe that we can double or even triple 
you know, our results in, in, in the medium and short term. S saying that, I want to, uh, I want Juan Carlos to share uh, his experience in Switzerland. So my first question would be, you know, what were the challenges that you wanted to address when we take the decision to, to launch RMX at Viva? Thank you, Juan Pablo, and, and hi, everyone. I mean, uh, this is a very, very clever solution when we partner with uh, Juan Pablo and their team. As an airline operator, I mean, all airlines, we share the same problems uh, on, the, on the spoilage, on running on empty flights, or on the spillage, on running on full flights. And on this second economic problem, uh, traditionally, uh, a revenue management team, sometimes we don't uh, estimate the correct demand, and, and simply we end up uh, flying full. Uh, and there's a, a high amount of passengers that uh, bought a, a, a very cheap seat, right? So all airlines we do overbooking. It's, it's, a, it's a useful problem, a very complex situation for the operations team. So with this type of functionality, we're trying to solve several things. Number one is trying to generate extra revenue uh, by creating and it's basically a marketplace between uh, early bookers who have flexibility and, and willing to to trade their seats with high yield passengers who want to fly in a full flight. And in the other side, I believe the, 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 the thing that Juan, Juan didn't mention, which is also a, a, a problem to be solved for the airlines is whenever airlines we sell a, 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 or oversell flights, there's a, the, the operational complexity when there's an actual overbooking, right? So if we can manage this pre-day pre of travel and pretty much we're able to, as we, as we rightly pointed today, we're, we're reselling pretty much on every full flight, uh, uh, six extra seats, uh, close to $800, $900 per flight. So that's additional revenue with no complexity, and we're taking the overbooking problem out of the gate, right? Uh, uh, so it's a win-win for the operations team, for the, for the revenue team, and of course for the airline, which uh, this goes directly to the bottom line. Thanks, Juan Carlos. And what about your thoughts, I mean, since we launched, I mean, Taking in mind the, the real results that we are, we're, we're seeing every month. I, I mean, I think, I think as, a, as, a, as an IT partner, I, 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 I mean, we are, we are pushing you and you guys are pushing us in trying to develop new functionalities. Yes, right now we have launched several functionalities that you share some of the benefits and, and we're happy to share them because we believe this is going to be a norm in the future. Uh, but I believe uh, the actual... Uh, results uh, uh, revenue-wise are there, and, and we're very happy with that. But most important is passengers and the flexibility we're giving passengers and the passengers that are getting an actual uh, uh, proposal to, to trade their, their, their flights, getting either either a, a premium of what they paid or or simply a flight in another uh, uh, day, etc. Uh, uh, passengers are very happy so far, and, and, and the, 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 the new use cases that we're going to launch soon, we're going to even empower more the consumer being able to have more flexibility uh, uh, while they, they uh, purchase their flight and, and when they decide to do something else. Uh, w were you surprised about the, the, the adoption? Or? I mean, the adoption, right now we are, we are approaching our passengers in most of the cases uh, and, and we're pleasantly surprised that they're happy in receiving these type of offers. And I think the next stage in which now the passengers are going to approach us when they change their plans and traditionally, a ULCC, when you buy an airline ticket, if you change your plans, you lose your flight, right? So now they're going to they're gonna be empowered with several other functionalities uh, uh, that are going to go live soon. Uh, so that, in our view, the passenger is going to have a, a much flexible airline ticket. Uh, and most important, they're going to be able to be in control on their destiny. And in many cases, uh, uh, make an extra money, right? And, and it's a win for the passengers. Uh, we're going to make much more money by reselling this this airline ticket to, to a last minute passenger which is willing to pay four or five times. So, so look, I mean, we're excited on, on the future. Um, and do you believe that, you know, RMX and these use cases are, are, will become like the industry standards? I think for airlines running at high low factors, we all share the same uh, spillage effect. So, so I think that's something all airlines with high low factors should look at. I mean, certainly that should be the norm. Because at the end, I like that you mentioned like a post-booking revenue management. I mean, once you sell the flight, it's hard to change what you have done, right? So if you're, there's a chance you can redo that, this is a perfect tool for our revenue management teams, our commercial teams. So do you recommend RMX and this? So, so, far, so far, I can recommend, <laughs> and, and if there are airline customers here, you should try and, 
and, and, and also I think it's important the agility. Uh, we like to partner with companies that are willing to, to uh, think outside the box and apart from the traditional a vendor pitch they have, and if there's a, a new tool, a new functionality that we believe we should develop together, we, we like to see partners that have agility in decision making, in developing, and pushing the boundaries to see if we can try things. Sometimes they, we fail on those, but many times we succeed, and, and that's the things we have found with, with you guys, and congrats to you and our team. Thanks. And I mean, being an, an, an industry leader, and an innovative industry leader, how, how do you see the, the evolution? I mean, how, how, do, do, how, how are you envisioning you know, RMX and all these use cases? I mean, the, the, the industry, and, I, and the perfect example is today, I mean, in this big venue, I mean, there are so many vendors with so many specific type of functionalities on the different uh, airline value chain. It's such an unbalanced industry in which the airlines make little to no money, very few airlines with deliver profits on a sustainable basis. Uh, uh, but uh, we're all chasing always the last cent on the cost side. Uh, we're always trying to reduce complexity. And of course, if we can bring extra revenue uh, with zero to non-complexity, that's the type of things airlines try to look. So uh, 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 there's always a dilemma on airlines trying to, when they're chasing revenue, normally they, they bring some comple additional complexity to, to, the, to the business. So it's, it's cool to find solutions in which you can bring additional revenues and also solve an operational or a complexity the business has. In, in this case, our overbooking, the complexity of managing passengers at gate, the complexity of compensating those passengers and in countries like Europe or the US, now compensations are getting more aggressive uh, through regulators. So uh, it's good to find technological, technological partners that can help us solve this a, 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 a actual problems the industry have, and if we can make a, a, a profit on those, a, those are the, the the quick wins we would like to find more often. And, and I mean, what what's I mean, if, if we're talking about profit increase and RAS increase, you know, what's what do you what what do you see the potential? I mean, thinking about like the like the midterm or long term. Look, look at the end. I think uh, if we can if we can get the right balance in in getting. Uh, 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 several flights uh, on every flight we're selling resold and making a profit. I mean, right now we have an average six, but if in the future we can increase this to 10 or 15, that'll be great. But most important, if we could completely eliminate the physical overbooking at the gates, right, by bringing extra high yielding passengers and providing flexibility to those uh, uh, higher flexible passengers, we're solving uh, a problem that has been for ages in aviation, and we see it every day, every time we fly, we start seeing how they start making offerings at gate, and $1,000, $2,000, and this and that, and suddenly nobody wants to uh, 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 give their seat, now they, they're gonna force somebody out of the, of, 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 of the plane. So uh, we believe that we should solve this part, but most important, uh, give more flexibility to a customer to be able to, to manage their booking wisely, uh, uh, and why not, in some cases, uh, when they get a good offering, make some money out of it, right? Thank you very much, Juan Carlos. I think that we are on time. Perfect. So thank you very much for being here, and th thank you. Thank